Hello, my name is Hebs Hannes. As the Student Council President, it is an honor to welcome you all to our Veterans Day program. Our intent with this program is to both share awareness of military service with our youth and to thank and recognize all those who have served our country. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Freedom and Unafraid by Kinsey Kicker. We may think freedom's free, but all veterans had to fight. Thankfully, they didn't flee. Veterans stood strong through the night. Many battles were tough. We are all thankful, even me. All these veterans had it rough, but freedom is afraid. We had it good, but many soldiers suffer from the sights. At the end of the fight, there is always life. And that we love Kensley Zip, by Kensley Zipke. Raise your hands in praise for our veterans. They have gone through pain for us. They committed to caring for our country, the land that we love. America is a great place because of you. You are loyal and true. You make our country fly. For you, we will raise the flag high. <laughs> in the shoes of one of the founding fathers. Would you say that our country right now is at its greatest peak of prosperity? Would you agree that as a country we have put in our utmost effort to continue the legacy of the diligent work that our founding fathers crafted? Throughout our country's history, there have been many triumphs that have helped shape America into what it is today. The Declaration of Independence was created to give us an insight into the ideals of what our country should be. Without the American Revolutionary War, the dream of an independent America would have never existed. The Bill of Rights was built on the foundation that our American freedoms should be protected and cherished. Lastly, the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Ending segregation in public places and banning employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, and sex is one of the most crowning legislative movements America has ever accomplished. Fast forward to 2020, is this the country the founders had envisioned when they were the leaders of our nation? Over the years, it seems as if we have forgotten our ways, our pride, our patriotism. According to the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment states that the U.S. Constitution protects the freedom of speech, religion, the press, and peaceful protest. As a country, we should abide by these rules, yet we do the very opposite. Today, we shame those who dare to speak out. We go against one of our own kind who don't share the same beliefs. And we seem to believe that violence is the only way to substantiate something that needs to be held to a higher standard. This is not what our founding fathers ever envisioned. 
Our founding fathers lived to inspire us Americans to work together in times of our country's imperfection so that we can become stronger together and overcome the struggles we encounter. If we are unable to overlook our differences, America will never be great again. Freedom. Freedom is a privilege our country has worked so hard to come by. Thousands of soldiers gave up their lives so that the rest of us could live independently. If any one of the founding fathers were alive today, they would see that many of us take this liberty for granted each and every day. It is uncivil of any American to dignify people who are brave enough to stand up for themselves. If we continue to fight the right to be American, then what significance does the American Revolutionary War hold? What purpose does the Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights have? In the midst of these smaller struggles, the United States faces much more extensive problems such as discrimination. The founding fathers of our country believe that all people are created equal. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed to ensure that all Americans stood by these beliefs. Today, there are many Americans who see past the color of their neighbor's skin or the gender of their co-worker. There are also a handful of people who do not think someone of another race, religion, or gender are worthy of being treated as they are in today's society. No matter how any American views this subject, we are all interchangeable on the inside. The founding fathers of our pronounced country seeked out for peace among us all. And maybe someday, if us citizens of the United States are able to set aside our differences and opinions, what the founding fathers had envisioned for our future will become a reality. This is the country the founders envisioned. As basketball coaches prepare for competition, they assemble a game plan. The game plan consists of offensive plays, defensive matchups, and specific instructions. If the basketball team is able to utilize and execute the game plan that the coach envisioned, the competition should result in their favor. Similarly, the founders of our country constructed the Constitution of the United States. Within this document, the founders declare instructions and guidelines that they believe will be necessary to direct America into a successful and independent country. Although the founders of the United States promoted a unified system to lead its citizens, I do not believe that this is the country they envisioned. After 20 years of dedication and service to the United States, George Washington wrote his farewell address. Washington makes an effort to state, let me now take a more comprehensive view and warn you in the most solemn manner against the baneful effects of the spirit of party generality. By this, he is warning the American people of the harmful effects of dividing themselves into political parties. As our coach, he is suggesting that our country will function better as one team. George Washington was not a member of a political party and consequently he did not support the concept of them. In a brand new democratic governmental system, Americans began to find comfort in their ability to express their opinions. Naturally, people supported different sides of every issue. Despite his predecessor's warning, our second president, John Adams, established three political groups immediately following Washington's presidency. With, this, with these three new parties, Federalist, Anti-Federalist, and Democratic Republican, Americans were able to relate to and identify with fellow citizens who shared similar ideas and agendas. In the early years of the United States establishment, the president would be the candidate who collected the most electoral votes. The vice presidential election was held on the same ballot. This position would be filled by the candidate who received the second most votes. You can immediately recognize how this might create conflict. Imagine our country's predicament if Hillary Clinton would have been elected to be the vice president to Donald Trump in 2016. Two leaders who cannot agree are incapable of effectively leading our country. Two coaches who cannot work together will more than likely not have a successful season. Political parties have since, al since altered the way in which elections are conducted. I am less than a year away from having the ability to vote. From my perspective, it was an effective alteration of the voting system that the second place winner was not chosen to be the automatic vice president. However, is the cavernous separation between parties what our founders really envisioned? In the last six years, at the hands of social media, there have been drastic changes in the way that we view our country and its leaders. Never before in our history have political leaders been so outspoken and disrespected. Unfortunately, we Americans are no longer unified, but completely detached from one another because of our leadership's examples. 
There's a lack of respect for those in political office, but have they been behaving in a way that, that does not deserve respect? As a result, we have begun to discuss people more than their ideas. Based on who you decide to support, you are given a label, Republican or Democrat, conservative or liberal, right or left. We are no longer a team. Again, did our founders anticipate how far the separation would grow when party lines were drawn? The founders of the United States envisioned a country founded on team-like unity and support. This is a concept that I believe has grown distant from us, but has not been lost. Men and women have sacrificed their lives with a passion to maintain such an amazing country. These brave men and women, our beloved veterans, fought with a unified goal to defend the team-like principles that our founding fathers once established. We, the people of the United States, need to do our part to remain unified as a team for the future of this nation. We need to return to the basic principles that our coach, George Washington, initially envisioned for our nation's success. Thank you. Is this the country our founding fathers envisioned? At the end of my freshman year, I was able to travel to Washington, D.C. Prior to this experience, everything I visualized about history and government came from the movies. One of the attractions we toured was the National Archives, which holds the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, and other historical documents. In the sensationalized movie, National Treasure, the actor Nicolas Cage attempted to steal the Declaration of Independence from the National Archives. My experience made it believable that these documents really are national treasures and are worthy of preservation and protection. The lights in the rotunda were dimmed, no cameras were allowed, the doors were bolted, and security was extreme. The Constitution and Declaration of Independence are frail and warm, large pieces of cream-colored paper. Each page is encased in a glass display and the handwritten calligraphy is hardly legible. These documents are important to history, but are they still relevant? Is this the country the Founding Fathers envisioned, and do these tattered pieces of paper still serve a purpose in our democracy? Great men like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington wrote these documents over 244 years ago, as they built a new country seeking unity and equality. Unity and equality between different genders, religions, races, ages, etc. in the United States have continued to face controversy and challenges over the years. The summer of 2020 was an especially turbulent time of protests and unrest. The objectionable handling of an arrest in Minneapolis, Minnesota, resulted in the death of a man named George Floyd. The death sparked immediate uproar in the Black Lives Matter movement. American citizens of all races and ethnicities joined forces to speak out against inequality and injustice. Unfortunately, in many cities, these peaceful protests turned violent. All over the country, monuments were being destroyed and vandalized. Monuments that represented great leaders in our country. Cities were being torn apart and burned to the ground. I do not believe that these behaviors represent the great country our founding fathers had envisioned as they dreamed about the future. But they laid the groundwork to help lead our country through tough times like these. When the Constitution was written, the first ten amendments were declared as the Bill of Rights. These rights included the freedom of religion, speech and assembly, the right to bear arms, limits on government power, certain seizure laws, the right to due process, speedy and public trials, and the freedom from cruel and unusual punishment. I wonder if the Founding Fathers knew how important these amendments would be for our country even hundreds of years later. These amendments are the cornerstones of our laws and civil rights. The injustice that George Floyd faced was in violation of the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual punishment. The officers are accused of using unreasonable and deadly force. However, the Fifth and Sixth Amendments promised them due process and a jury tri trial. The peaceful protests that followed were allowed to happen due to the First Amendment, promising freedom of speech and assembly. Countless citizens have impacted the trajectory of our nation through the power of the First Amendment. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is not a founding father, but he is known as one of the most influential leaders in history. He never would have been able to affect changes in equality if he was never given the right to freedom of speech. It is incredible that the Founding Fathers' visions for these policies still protect citizens today. Thomas Jefferson started the Declaration of Independence with the line, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
I believe that the Founding Fathers would be honored to know that the documents they created in the 1700s still influence our country today. Collectively known as the Charters of Freedom, the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights has secured the freedoms of American people for over two centuries and are instrumental to the founding philosophy of the United States. The future of our country will continue to rely on leaders willing to protect these national treasures.
we've reached a point in our program in which we can give back to our local veterans. Each year, our teachers are allowed to wear denim if they provide funds towards our program. I want to thank Mrs. Gary for coordinating the program, and I want to thank our staff for all of the money that they have provided. I'm happy to announce that we are able to give $500 to the Day County Veterans Association. We hope that they can put this to good use. And again, we want to thank all of their veterans for their service. At this time, we would like to honor and thank all veterans. Thank you for your service during the following conflicts and during peacetime. World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Gulf War, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, Peacetime. And a special thank you to all those who are actively serving at this time. So this brings an end to our Veterans Day program during the COVID-19 pandemic. This production would not be possible without the efforts of many students and staff. Thank you to music teachers, Mrs. Bowley and Ms. Settlemoyer. Thank you to kindergarten teachers, Mrs. Hansen and Mrs. Gregerson. Thank you to fifth grade teachers, Mrs. Kwasniewski and Mrs. Gerdes. Thank you to senior English teacher, Mrs. Wigleitner. Thank you to high school band and choir, the elementary student council, the kindergarten students, Kinsley Kicker, Kensley Zabecki, Tegan Miller, Ellie Mount, and Olivia Dorsett. Thank you to Mrs. Gary for coordinating the Denim Days funds and to the teachers and staff who contributed. Thank you to members of the multimedia class and to Mrs. Poole for producing this video. And finally, today, tomorrow, and anytime you have the opportunity, please thank a veteran for their service and for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. Happy Veterans Day. Have a great day.